next uh, eukaryotic cell that we will take up is a plant cell. And after seeing the structure of animal cell, now we will be able to understand how plant cell is different from it. In plant cells, normally the shape is hexagonal or polygonal. So let us make one hexagonal cell and outside this, the line or the membrane which we are drawing, this is the plasma membrane. So same as animal cell, plasma membrane. Outside this plasma membrane, there is an additional layer that is known as the cell wall. So in case of plant cell, this is a new thing or an additional thing which is not found in animal cell. This extra layer which we are drawing is the cell wall. And in case of plant cell, this is made up of cellulose. At certain areas, we would find that this cellulose is not there or there is a different structure which is called a pit through which the exchange of substances can take place. So this layer which we have drawn outside the plasma membrane is the cellulosic cell wall. So this one is the cell wall and it is made up of cellulose. The area where this layer is missing, actually it is not missing, there is a middle lamella which goes like this but the area which we draw like this is known as a pit through which the substances can get exchanged between the two cells. In plant cell, the vacuole is single and it is a large vacuole and this vacuole occupies most of the space in a plant cell. So this is the vacuole which has occupied the space and because of this, the nucleus gets shifted towards one side. So this large structure is the vacuole. Inside the vacuole, there is a watery substance filled rich in mineral ions and this is known as the sap. Sap has water plus minerals. So this vacuole can also be termed as a sap vacuole or simply vacuole. Because of this nucleus will be drawn on one side. So nucleus is not in the center. It is slightly shifted towards one side. Again, double membrane, nuclear pores are also there. So this structure is the nucleus. We are not labeling all the parts. We have done that in case of animal cell. We'll just draw this. This is the nucleolus. Here is nucleoplasm. And in the nucleoplasm are the chromatin fibers. So the structure of nucleus is same as in, uh, as is in animal cell. Same structures. Two endoplasmic reticulums will have to draw. One endoplasmic reticulum which is going to have ribosomes attached on it. And that one will be called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the other one is going to be without ribosomes we would call it the smooth one. And both these endoplasmic reticulums, they are arising from this uh, nuclear membrane. So this one is SER, that is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And this one has the ribosomes attached on its surface. So this becomes the rough. This is RER, rough endoplasmic reticulum. We will draw other organelle also which are common in uh, plant and animal cell. One such is Golgi complex. In case of plant cell, the Golgi complex or the Golgi body 
is diffuse that means they are scattered their number can also be more than one in animal cell we normally make the golgi body closer to nucleus because it is perinuclear very close to nucleus in case of plant cell we would make it slightly away from the nucleus but one thing which is common is the convex side is towards the nuclear membrane and the concave side is towards the plasma membrane this is golgi body in case of plant cell golgi body is also known as dictyosome so this is the term given to the same structure golgi body term common given to animal cell or given the, to the structure in animal as well as plant cell but dictyosome word is given to golgi complex exclusively in plant cell mitochondria which is again common to both the cells say inner membrane is thrown into folds outer membrane is smooth so this is the mitochondrion in a animal cell we made many lysosomes here the number of lysosome is less comparatively these are lysosomes in case of plants the plant lysosomes are also known as spherosomes so spherosome is a plant lysosome one structure which is found only in plant cell not in animal cell that is the plastid here we are drawing a chloroplast in chloroplast the double membrane is present the outer is also smooth inner is also smooth and inside are present stacks of thylakoid so here there are grana present we will draw this in detail later on and inside these thylakoids is present the green pigment just quickly how this chloroplast is the chloroplast has this outer double membrane and here are the stacks of thylakoid each stack is known as a granum and inside this in the thylakoid membrane are present the chlorophyll pigments the green pigment which is present is chlorophyll so we have drawn chloroplast here but there can be other plastids also chloroplast other plastids are leucoplast or chromoplast vacuole is large lysosomes few mitochondria depending upon the metabolic rate endoplasmic reticulums both that is ser and rer golgi complex and the space has the cytoplasmic material so here is this cytoplasm in this plant cell we have not drawn the centrosome or centrio so the difference is in case of animal cell there was only plasma membrane no cell wall in animal cell only plasma membrane in plant cell outside plasma membrane cell wall is also present in animal cell there is centrosome with centriole in plant cells there is no centrosome no centrioles in plant cell there are plastids or chloroplast which are absent in case of animal cell so other structures are same cytoskeleton very few but we can draw few cytoskeletal structures there are few more micro bodies which are present one micro body is known as spherosome so we can draw a couple of more micro bodies and then we can all label them together so this is a micro body the organelle which are included in this category of microbodies are spherosomes peroxisomes and glyoxisomes 
So all these three things together are termed as microbodies. So they, their number, their uh, type would depend upon the cell. So we would discuss this when we come to individual things like what is the function of spherosome, where would we find it, what is glyoxysome going to do, where do we find it, that we would take up later. Here we are talking of the general structure of this. So this is a typical plant cell and now we have a comparative thing also how plant cell and animal cells they differ from each other. So these two are the typical eukaryotic cell. So after understanding all different types of cells, that is prokaryotic as, as well as eukaryotic cells, now we would take up individual parts of the cell. And the first part that we would take up from the next uh, video would be the plasma membrane.